We even got sound. Good morning, Trailhead. How are y'all this morning? Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll talk about a few things. Father, we come to you today. Lord, we just humbly stand before you. Lord, we thank you for another day that you've granted us with, Lord. Lord, today, I lift up this entire body of Christ to you. Lord, I just ask that you soften hardened hearts, give them hearts of flesh. Just impart your word, your song, and your praise so that they can carry it through the week, Lord, and just apply it to their lives. Father, we pray for those that are on the road today, those that are traveling. I especially lift up our youth today, Lord, that are on the road to Rio Dosa. Just keep them safe and out of harm's way. Get them to their destination safely, Lord, and just return them back home to us, Lord. Father, we lift up our first responders, our military. Lord, and we continue to pray for Uvalde and the tragedy that uh, they're undergoing. We just ask that you touch those that are in mourning, Lord, and those that you just know what they need. We lift them up to you. Father, we just thank you. We praise you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The youth left this morning at 5, 5, 5 this morning. Uh, me and Robert and Jennifer were here this morning to see them off. They're on their way to Rio Dosa. They were bright-eyed and chipper and ready to go. And I'm sure they're all asleep right now. Yeah. I told, I told mine, so, stay awake as long as you can so you get in the car and you so sleep. It's a 10-hour drive for them, so, but they got a nice, comfortable suburban that they're in, so they, they'll, I, I don't know, but I told Robert's da- granddaughters, I said, if it's me, I'd go to the very back and just go to sleep. What I and what do they have in their hands? Got pillows and blankets. <laughs> uh, we're going to be celebrating our graduates today. Uh, some of them aren't here today, but... We've got cards. Uh, if, if you didn't get a chance to get them a card, we'll, we'll give you one, or you can go back. Where are they at? They're in front of the boxes out there. If you grab one of those cards, just fill out uh, congratulations or something on there and drop it in the boxes. It, it would be greatly appreciated just to let them know that we think about them and, and we, we pray for their future. And now it's up to you all. Jesse? Thank you. He's, he's picking on me today because I've been gone a while. See, see. Some bright morning when this life. Hallelujah, bye and bye. I'm 
Me and Jesus got our own thing going. Me and Jesus got it all worked out. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. We don't need nobody to tell us what it's all about. I know a man once was a sinner. I know a man once was a drunk. I know a man one was a loser. He went out one day called an altar out of a stump. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. Me and Jesus got it all worked out, all worked out. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. We don't need anybody to tell us what it's all about. Jesus brought me through all of my troubles. Jesus brought me through all of my trials. Jesus brought me through all of my heartache. I know Jesus ain't gonna forsake me now. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. Me and Jesus got it all worked out, all worked out. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. We don't need anybody to tell us what it's all about. We can't afford any fancy preaching. We can't afford any fancy church. We can't afford any fancy singing. You know Jesus got a lot of poor people doing his work. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. Me and Jesus got it all worked out, all worked out. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. We don't need anybody to tell us what it's all about. We don't need anybody to tell us what it's all about. Yeah. I was standing back there waiting for David to get ready to yeah. give the announcements. And he's the one driving the Suburban. Call him. Yeah. So you uh, call him. You need to read this. You need to read this. <laughs> Hold the speaker up to the phone. For all your new guests, thank you. Thank you for coming to, to visit us. We appreciate that. If, if you're a new guest and we missed you, we have a gift bag for you. So if you'll raise your hand, we'll bring one to you. And no, Cloudy, you don't get in there. The summer trip. I told you all the youth left this morning to head to Rio Dosa. Keep David, Ellie, Toy in your prayers for safe travels and safe adventures and putting up with a bunch of kids and teenagers at that. Uh, graduates will be celebrating the graduates today immediately following these services. Please stay. What? Yeah, please please stick around. There's a big old cake back there, like a four by eight sheet of cake. It's a big old piece of cake. So stick around. Get your piece of cake before you leave and, and, and just congratulate the, the graduates or the graduate that's here. Uh, the, the rest of them are, are working. Lisa, you have a lot of cake. You got a lot of cake to eat. Um, let's see, Bible study. Larry, you can grab the clipboards. Oh, well, that's for the meal, though, isn't it? Oh, okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. The Bible study. We're going to take a couple of weeks break, <coughs> two weeks on, from the Bible studies. The ladies will be doing, when we get back together, the gospel on the ground. 
the grit and glory of the early church in Acts. You'll need to sign up for this. It's on the back table. Uh, you must sign up to attend this because they, they have to order the books and everything that go along with this Bible study. And it's the, what's her name? Christine McClellan. It, I, I watched the one that they just done. And man, she, I, I just w- wish I had the wealth of knowledge about the Middle East that she has. <laughs> uh, and then the men will come together and I think we've kind of decided to, to look at the book of James and, and study that and, and go through it and, and really break it down the men's group the next men's group meeting will be Thursday, July it's June the 16th is that the right date? at 6.30 we will be providing a meal uh, the next meal here we go Larry Our next meal is June the 19th. It's Dad's favorite. Yes, that's liver and onions. Sign up. I keep hinting. Sign up sheets are being passed around. I know a lot of people don't like liver and onions, but I love them. I think he's trying to convince us something. <laughs> what, 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 did, what did they call that back in the day when they'd flash something? Yeah. Subliminal <laughs> message. There we go. Uh, the play day. The sign-up sheets for buckle sponsorships are in the foyer. If you're interested in sponsoring a buckle, it's $125. Please get with David, Ellie, or Sugar uh, for, with the sponsorship money. Uh, we have many buckles still that, that are in need of sponsorship. The prayer cards, they're left in the, the seats here. If you have need of prayer, if you'll fill one of those cards out, we'll meet up after church and group together and pray over these cards. If there's not one in the seat, raise your hand and we'll bring you one. And the next thing is the kiddos. All the little kiddos. Sure, just a wagon. And I'm going to go ahead and, and request that y'all pray for a bunch of our congregation because they're out sick with I guess it's the stomach bug, stomach flu that's going around, and a whole bunch of them have it. And if you've got that, stay away from me because I don't want it. That's some nasty stuff. All right, y'all are up. We've gathered up her longhorn bound for Abilene. Peddler came out to camp selling notions that we'd need. Among the things he had to sell was a Bible old and worn. Old Cousy said, I'll take it. We'll have church on Sunday morn. We had church at the wagon Sunday morning. We'd gather underneath the wagon fly. Oh, Cousy would read from the good book and we'd sing in the sweet by and by. In the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore I'd see him in the morning As he sat there by the fire Reading from that Bible Every now and then he'd smile Waiting on the biscuits, drinking coffee from a can. Sometimes you'd hear him softly whisper, Amen. We had church at the wagon Sunday morning. We'd gather underneath the wagon fly. Oh, Cousy would read from the good book. And we'd sing in the sweet by and by, in the sweet by 
by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore we finally hit Abilene to drive it all gone well. We never lost one single man while pushing up the trail. I know the Lord heard Coosey's prayers as he read God's holy word. That Sunday morning singing was the best I've ever heard. We had church at the wagon Sunday morning. We'd gather underneath the wagon fly Old Coosey would read from the good book And we'd sing in the sweet by and by In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. All right, I want everybody to sing with me. We all know this one. I'm not going to do a twist. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the sky. They tell yeah. me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Keeping it, keeping it original. People still, they cheat and lie. Oh well, it was. 
will buy But they don't know On Judgment Day Black gold and silver Will melt away I'd rather be Then live in this world in a house of gold and deny my God and through my soul. What good is gold? If your heart is not pure and true, then sinner, hear me when I say, fall down on your knees and pray. My Jesus died. I'm sorry, Mary, you're overruled. <laughs> <laughs> the youth, you taking them? I don't know how many we got. Do we have any? We got a few. We got a few. I see two for sure. Three. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all have to forgive me this morning. I'm a little cloudy. Getting up at four in the morning just isn't what I'm normally accustomed to. More like 5.30 or 6, not four in the morning. But we got to see the youth off this morning. And there's, well, all the youth have never been to Rio Dosa. And I don't know how many of y'all in here have ever been to Rio Dosa, New Mexico. But uh, it's beautiful. But the, here, the problem is, is they had... Some pretty bad fires up there, and uh, the, one of the things that they really wanted to go do uh, was at Ski Apache, and Ski Apache is closed, and that, that was the zip line, and that zip line at Ski Apache, from everything I read, is like the second longest war in, in, in the United States, not in the world, but in the United States. Okay. That, that explains a lot of it, you know. And, but that zip line was like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes long. And I didn't know this. I found out something about David. And y'all need, I hope he watches this. He's scared of heights. Because <laughs> the first thing he asked me, because I found another zip line, and it, it's not nearly as long. It's like three minutes long. And it, it goes over the lake there at the uh, end of the mountain gods. And the first question was, is how high is it? <laughs> I don't know, it's high enough to go over the lake. I mean, and I said, it's not, but about two minutes long. He said, well, I guess I could close my eyes and scream like a girl all the way across. <laughs> I did not know that he's scared of heights. Yeah. So, so I sent him 
some links to skydiving and bungee jumping. Huh? I've bungee jumped before. It's uh, no, it, it's over before you know it. It's, I mean, it's it's not bad. Well, the bungee stops you. You stretch out and then you just bounce back. You eventually just quit. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I was way younger then. Now I jerk my hips out of socket. And, but uh, 1,100 feet, there you go. But anyway, there's the, the, most of those kids, well, all the kids have never been to Rio Dosa, and I found out that David himself had never been to Rio Dosa. So he's in for a treat. And Toy told me, talking to her this morning, that she's driven through New Mexico but never really stopped. And so the adults are in for a big treat. And I don't know about y'all, as you get older, you learn to pack accordingly because you know you're going to buy stuff when you go somewhere new. You got to buy a t shirt, you got you to bring trinkets home. Well, the Robert's granddaughters, man, they packed for like they were leaving for a month. I mean, so, <laughs> did I say boys? The girls? Oh. It, anyway, they, they all got t shirts that they wear. They're all going to be matching, but they're tie dye and they're cool. I told Sugar, I said, we need some of those just for the church. They're really cool. Hippie-looking T-shirts. They're, they're neat-looking. Uh, they came out way better than I thought they would. Well, this morning, what I want to talk about and what the Lord laid on my heart is, why don't we go to church? Why don't we even bother? You know? Why, 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 why do we come here? You know have a bunch of good reasons on why not to come to church. And I used to use the majority of these reasons. These are the ones I just come up with off the top of my head. Some of them are the ones that I actually used before. And let's talk about some of these reasons. There's nothing but a bunch of hypocrites in the church. Right? You come to the church and they just look down on you and, and down their nose because you're the new guy or the new family or whatever. I can tell you they don't happen here in Trailhead, but it's, it happens in churches. It does, and it, and it gives people a, a bad taste for, for the church. And then I went, to, went, uh, I went to church once, and the church hurt my feelings. You know, if we go to church that way, we're going for the wrong reasons to begin with. If you let man hurt your feelings. And again, these things I'm telling you, I've experienced in my life, and, and, and I use these reasons for myself. The church hurt my feelings, and that's why I quit going. Uh, I quit going to a church one time just because the pastor said something I didn't like. It was the truth, but I didn't like it, so I just quit going. I mean, it, it convicted me so much, I thought he was picking on me alone and... and didn't want to go back, so I didn't. I have better things to do than to go listen to a bunch of religious junk. You ever thought this? No? I can tell you that there's some churches that are so tied up in legalism that they take away from, from what God has to say. They're, they're, they're tied up in, in just little minor things that you can or can't do, and they have rules and, and regulations, so you just you walk away from it. I can watch it on TV, or we stream hours. I can just go to social media and watch it now. I don't even have to live, leave the house. I don't even have to get dressed. It's, it's a lot easier. Don't have to waste my gas. With the price of gas the way it is today, don't have to waste my gas to get to church. I can just watch it at the house, right? It's a good place to be. I can do church at home with me and my family, and I can open up the Bible, and we can just do church at home. I've heard people tell me that before. 
And then I ask them, how often do you do that? Well, every now and then. We don't do it every Sunday, but every now and then. And the problem with that is, is to, and, and, and the ladies will see this in this Bible study, is when you go into the book of Acts, Christ has laid out how the church should be structured. Now, who in this home church is the pastor and who are your elders and, and who, who's holding everybody accountable within this home church? I mean, it, there's, a, there's a lot more to than just sitting down and reading the Bible when you actually look at the building of the church. And, and if, for those that didn't know, the church is, is called an ecclesia, which basically means a gathering of, of people. It's not, we'll get into this, I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's not this building, it's the gathering of people. And how can you do that with just you and your family and who's in charge and who's not in charge and who's holding who accountable? I don't know about y'all, but if I go to pointing something out to my wife, sometimes that don't go so good. Or she points something out to me, sometimes that don't go so good because we, we take offense to it when... In all actuality, they're telling us the truth. We just don't want to hear it. I couldn't find the perfect church. I couldn't find a pastor that could actually feed me. Or the people, I just... They were hypocrites. I didn't go. I can't, I can't find this perfect church. Let me tell you all something. If you find that perfect church... Don't go to it. Because as soon as you walk through the doors, you ruin it. It's no longer a perfect church. I don't know about y'all, but I've got so much things from my past and, and things that I've done that I can't walk in there. I'm broken just like everybody else is broken. And I come to, to the church because it's the hospital for sinners. And we come here to, to hear the word of God and to build on ourselves and if I find that perfect church, I can't go through the doors. Because if I go through the doors, it's no longer a perfect church. It's a broken church. That's what I love about this church is we all come together. We all realize that we all are in need of a Savior. But see, the problem is, is sadly, folks, the people that really need to hear this sermon won't hear it. Why won't they hear it? Because they don't come to church anyway. So why is it that we even need to talk about that? We come to church, we, we know we should be here, and we come listen and know what we're supposed to do. But how many of you can articulate to somebody else why they should or need to be in church? And that's what we're going to talk about today. And there's going to be some, some scripture here, and if you've got a pen... Write it down. If not, I'll give it to you afterwards what scriptures there are. And then we're going to, at the end of this, I'm going to give you five reasons why you should be in church. Five reasons that you can use to tell somebody why they should go to church. And there's no way that you can dispute this because it comes from the gospel of Jesus Christ. And for those of you that are visiting, that's what this church believes in is the Bible. We don't believe in man's law. We don't believe in some legalistic view of the Bible. We believe in the Bible, what Jesus has to say, what the Old Covenant has to tell us. It all ties together. So let's move on. Why do we even go to church? Why, why even be here? What is it that, that we should be doing? Why should we even go? Well, First off, Jesus is the one that established this church. If, if man says he established a church, or if somebody tells you, well, I started a church. No, you didn't. Jesus was the first one to start a church. You can turn with me to Matthew. And I'll show you. Go to 17. Now, before we get there, let me tell you what's going on. Jesus has, has gone to his disciples after he's been out spreading the gospel. 
And he asked his disciples, who do they say I am? Who, who do the people say I am? And the disciples are telling him, well, some say you're uh, Elijah. Some say that you're uh, John the Baptist. But then Peter replies this way. He said, I'll back up one. Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And then Jesus replies, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the key of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I know I went ahead a little bit. but Not even the gates, not even hell itself, not even Satan itself can destroy what Jesus has established. So you see, this is the... What in the world? I look up and we're going pop all. <laughs> right? Hey, we can get there. All right, we're back to Matthew now. Hey, it's got to make it fun, right? But this is the first mention in the New Testament that we see church. And if you go back to the, the, the Greek, it's ekklesia. But this is the very first time we see that Jesus tells us that he is going to establish his church. And he's going to do it through Peter, with Peter, and with the other apostles. And it happens in the book of Acts. If you want to see the whole history of the church and see what's going on, and I'm not going to talk about the history of the church today. I've done that before in other sermons where we really break down and see how the church was established. But it begins in the book of Acts is where the church really takes off and where the church really grows, and it grows by 3,000 people in one day alone. And the apostles are out speaking tongues, and no, it's not some gibberish that... It's, it's spoken. It's actually a language, and other people hear their own language when the apostles are talking. So we see that Christ himself establishes the church. Christ himself says, bless you. Christ himself says that uh, not even the gates of Hades can come against this church. Nothing on this earth will ever take the church down. I know to, in today's culture, society, the things that are going on uh, out on the left side and, and some even the far right, they want to they do away with, with God's church. And it, folks, right here, Jesus Christ himself says, it's not going to happen. It will not happen. So, Turn with me to Colossians. And yeah, I cheated today. I, I put some bookmarks in here. <laughs> Give you all a minute to get there. Colossians one seventeen. He is before all things, and in all things hold together. He is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, 
or the things on earth or things in heaven by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Again, what I'm reiterating here is that Jesus Christ is the head, excuse me, is the head of this church. Jesus Christ is the head of the church here. You guys are the body, and we're going to talk about being the body of Christ. But we see here that he is the head of the body, the church. So somebody asks you why you go to church, because Jesus Christ is the head of the church. It's not man. It's Christ himself. See, we are the body. Christ is the head. We are the hands and feet of the church. The church is not this building, folks. This, and I've said this a hundred times to Robert and some of the others, this could just as easily be a pipe yard as it could be a church. You guys, we are what make this the church, with Christ being the head of this church. But see... Why do you go to church? You come here because you're supposed to share your gifts. You're, you're not to sit on them like, and hoard them like they're only yours. Not at all. You're just to share these gifts with one another. And when we fail to do that, we cripple this body. I'm getting ahead of myself. We, it's like when, when a part of your body doesn't work properly then you have to compensate somewhere somehow for that portion of your body that doesn't work and when you come to church and you decide to sit on your gifts and not share them with other people that's exactly what you're doing in essence you're crippling the body of Christ you're to come here and share what God's given you it's, it's not yours God gave it to you to begin with the band gets up and they, and they sing for us. That's, that's their gift. Each and every one of you has a gift. Now, exactly what that gift is, I don't know. Some of you, I, I know exactly what it is. It's, it's, it's just the gift of servitude. Mine's the gift of gab, apparently. But if you don't, if you, if you just come here and you sit and you don't share with one another then you're, you're, you yourself are losing out on so much. Because it is a blessing when you get to share with somebody else. We talked about that a little bit last week. It's not about I, it's about us. And, and you're to share and, and you're to bless other people with the gifts that God's given you. And I keep saying it over and over and I'll continue to say It's the gifts God's given you. They're not yours. God gave them to you. He imparted them to you. If it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have them to begin with. So you've got to come here and share and talk with one another. Turn with me to Hebrews. Because that leads right into this. Call David. I've just flipped to it. <laughs> for those visiting, David gets on to me because I don't thumb through and, and wait on folks. And that used to aggravate me to no end when I would go to church and I'd find a reason not to go. And one of the reasons I wouldn't go because the pastor would get so far ahead of me. I was still in Hebrew, Colossians when he was a Hebrews and he moved forward. And I would, I'd get lost. And at that point, I didn't hear a thing he said anyway. But if you'll turn to Hebrews 10.23. And that's why I put them up here. So we can all be on the same page. All there? All right. Now I got to get there. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider. Am I in the right place? And let us consider how we may spur one another toward the love and good deeds. Not giving up on meeting together. Not giving up on meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But encouraging one another. 
and all the more as we see the day approach. Do y'all see the day approaching? I don't preach on the end of times because I have no clue when the end times are going to happen. But I can tell you we're closer today than we were yesterday. And I can tell you that there's some things that are going on in this world that hasn't happened in, in forever. And it just, it, some people say it's scary. To me, it, it just shows me that we're, we're getting closer. I, don't, I can't tell you when. And I can't tell you if it be in my lifetime, your lifetime. I don't know, but he tells you the days are approaching. And, and when they ask Christ about it, Christ said, I don't even know. The Father in heaven tells when it's going to happen. And, and I'm getting off on a whole other sermon. But they, you know, we, 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 the church, are the bride of Christ. And a lot of masculine guys don't want to hear that, that we are the bride of Christ. But you've got to go back to the, the, the Eastern standard of when you're the bride of Christ. Man, you are a prized possession, folks. You are. You should wake up in the morning and you're prized by Jesus Christ. That's why you come here. You come here to learn the Word. You come here to learn what's going on in the Scriptures. Because I can't do it on my, on my own. I, I mean, I've got to hear the Word too and learn and read and continue to read. And then we have to come together. And let us consider how we may spur one another toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together. As some are in the habit of doing. I was guilty. I was guilty of that. I'll tell you something. You can't do this by yourself. Satan's too strong. Way too strong. He knows what your flavor of sin is. And he'll hang that carrot in front of you and dangle it in front of you until it, you, you're by yourself, you just give in to it. Let's go to Ephesians. I didn't cheat this time, Jennifer. It's Ephesians 4. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. See, he's telling us you can't do this by yourself. He's telling us right here that it takes the body of Christ coming together and studying his word and learning his word to become a mature Christian. And it goes on to say that then he will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind or teaching by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful schemes. Do we see that happening today? I don't know about y'all, but there's, there's some guys out there and gals, that, for that matter, that, that have some very... Deceitful schemes going on that people are buying into. 
It goes back to that tickle your ear gospel that you want to hear what you want to hear and you don't want to hear the truth because the truth convicts your heart. But then Christ tells us the truth will set us free also. But you have to allow that to happen. Instead of speaking the truth and love, we will grow to become in every respect a mature body of Him who is the head, that is Christ. From Him, the whole body joined together and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself in love as each part works. Then we'll no longer be infants. You know, when you first accept Christ as, as your Lord and Savior, you're, you're given the milk. You, you're just starting your walk. You're, you're toddlers. You're, you're moving forward with Christ. And when you come together with other mature Christians, you start learning more and you start getting the meat and potatoes of what Christ has to tell, you, tell us. And you start learning the Bible and the Bible actually starts speaking to you. Have y'all noticed that? Have you seen this? That you open the scriptures and no longer are you just reading but you're actually hearing the word of God in your life? I tell y'all over and over, this is the manual. Guys, how many of us toss the manual off to the side and we just want to build it on our own? And then we have to go back because we have parts left over. This is the manual of life. And if you seek God's truth, you'll get it. And we've got to come here and join together and talk to one another and say, you know, I've read whatever I read and, and it just it's not making sense to me. And maybe the next person read it to you and this is the gift they share to you is that this is what was revealed. And then it starts building itself up in love. And each part works. It goes back to what I said a while ago. If you come here and you don't share your gift and you're part of the body of Christ, you're crippling that part of the body. You've got to share in love your gifts to the entire body. Now, I told you that we'd have five things, so why don't we even go to church? Why don't we even bother? I gave you the scriptures. Now, I'm going to give you five things that you can take back with you. And you, and you can, when somebody asks you, well, why is it that you even go to church anyway? It's a waste of time. Number one, you can't do this alone. We see in the scriptures we can't do it alone. We're to come together as the body of Christ to be built up in Christ. And that all the ligaments and everything will strengthen. And that we will grow stronger we will become more mature as Christians. Jesus himself is the one that built this church, not man. If you hear some guy say, oh, well, I built my church. Man, that, that's the wrong, this is, this is God's house. This is Jesus Christ that head of this, this house. Not, not me, not y'all, we're the body. Jesus leads us. And we're called as the body to meet together to build one another up. So we can't do it alone. Jesus Christ is the head. And we're called to meet together to build one another up. If you have a gift, you're to give it. It's given by God. It's to be shared, not, not withheld. And one part of the body suffers if you withhold whatever your gift may be. We're to come together, grow in faith, unity in Christ and become more mature Christians. Guys, I've used every excuse in the world in my past not to go to church. I couldn't find the right church, couldn't find the perfect church. The pastor was boring. 
the band didn't play the right kind of music. Robert. They're all excuses. Excuses we make not to go. And if we allow him, then Satan will come along and just reiterate your excuse and say, yeah, you're right, you shouldn't go. Or we find reasons not to go. Football's on, or there's fishing going on, or there's this going on. We find reasons not to come here. And it gets so easy. I missed it one Sunday. It's kind of like working out. Any of y'all ever work out before? You go to the gym and you work out and you work out and you, and you get in shape and then you skip once. And you're like, oh, well, I still feel pretty good. And you skip twice and oh, I still feel pretty good. And then pretty soon it's months that you didn't go to the gym. Church is the exact same thing. And then when you do go to the gym, you try and work out the exact same way you did before. And then you can't wash your hair the next day because you can't lift your arms up high enough because you're so sore. It's kind of the same thing with the church. You find excuses not to come, and those excuses just... Any little thing hinders you from coming here. Or, coming from, or going to any church for that matter. Don't let that happen in your life. Give people a reason why you come. And I gave you five good ones that you can share in the scriptures. And if you didn't write them down, get with me after church and I'll give you these scriptures. Read them. Know them. Let people know that they can't do this alone. And then when they try, trust me, I've been there, I've tried it. Satan comes at you hard and heavy when you don't come together in the body of Christ and build on one another. Christ tells us iron sharpens iron. And that's absolutely true. We can't do this by ourselves. I just want to throw this out there that the reason my wife and I are, chose to be a part of this church is because we have a pastor that's not ashamed and has the courage to stand up and preach the word of God with truth and conviction. Amen. And Pastor Shelton, I appreciate that. It's, this may seem kind of unusual, but I want to do a poem for you this morning by my hero, Red Stegall. It's a poem called Paw Paw. And we got a lot of pawpaws here this morning. And uh, there's been a lot of, of uh, uh, tragedies in our news for the last couple of weeks around our nation, especially our state. And uh, so I hope this poem might put a smile on your face this morning and give you some food to throw, but it's called Pawpaw. I call my granddad Pawpaw and I loved him more than life. I tried to copy everything he did. Of course, I was always underfoot and standing in the gate, but if it made him mad, he kept it hid. When I was two, he bought me my own saddle and horse. The seat of his old pickup was my bed. I learned to walk the way he walked, and I hung on every word he said. Papa used to brag on me to all the other guys, said I would be a champion one day. He taught me how to ride a bronc when I was just a kid. I wasn't good enough to make it pay. So when my grandson came along, I recognized the chance to relive memories of my childhood days. My daughter said that Paw Paw wasn't very dignified, but I had him call me Paw Paw anyway. I taught him how to throw a rope and he roped everything that came into his imaginary pen. I bought him his own saddle and a little spotted horse. And he and that horse became the best of friends. I guess I overdid it because he got us both in Dutch when he caught Grandma's rooster in the loop. Rooster didn't make it and his grandma threw a fit. He said the old bird's tough, but he'll make good soup. <laughs> we dodged a bullet once or twice and we've come out okay, though we haven't got by with everything. Like early last September, we were branding April calves the ones too small to brand in early spring. I was way off across the branding pen, not paying him no mind, and I caught him in the corner of my eye. He was in the pen a foot and building him a loop. I chuckled to myself, the boy's got tried. Much to my surprise and his, he caught a heifer calf. 
that must have weighed at least 400 pounds. She jerked that youngster off his feet before I could blink an eye. She quit the herd and took the higher ground. She drug him through the fresh manure and up against the fence. His shirt was torn to tathers in the chase. His pants were hanging off his hips. His boots were full of dirt. But bless his heart, his hat was still in place. I double hocked the heifer and the ground crew stretched her out. The boy escaped, but Lord, I don't know how. I swear I nearly lost it when he said, hey, shake out your loot and let's go get ourselves another cow. When we were in the barn last night, he asked if he could rope and I laughed it off and said, I guess you can. I never dreamed a four year old would have that kind of nerve. I'm sure the heifer didn't understand. I said, let's ride down to the tank and wash your face and hands. Then what he said just thrilled me through and through. But you don't wash your face and hands till you get in at night. I want to be a cowboy just like you. The mighty hero had returned victorious from the war. The handy hell was flush and full of spades. With cow manure on remnants of what used to be a shirt, he expected nothing less than accolades. But unless you fought the battle and unless you've won the war, the taste of victory don't seem quite so sweet. His mama saw destruction and a bruised and battered boy. To her, his hard won victory spelled defeat. He reveled in his glory as he told his mom the tale. He said that heifer run right in my noose. I worked her around the pen till Papa cut her by the heels. We burned her hide before we cut her loose. She said, why did you do that? As she grabbed him by the arm, I raised that girl and boy, can she get me. Before I let him in too deep, I'll throw the kid a line. Right now, it's best I ain't heard or seen. We're talking about a cyclone and a giant hissy fit. If she reacted like I thought she would, I popped the buttons off my shirt when he looked up and said, I did it because my papa said I could. Folks, I, I just, I bring y'all the Word of God straight out of the Bible. And it convicts me just as much as it convicts y'all sometimes. It touches me to the soul. Just go out. And when people ask you why you go to church, why you even bother, it's because you want to get closer to God. You want to come and be a part of the saints. And you guys are the saints. When you wake up in the morning, just remember who you are, whom you are. And that's God's, because you are a child of God. You are sons and daughters of the Most High. If you think about that every single morning, how can you have a bad day? Seriously, how can you have a bad day if you think about who you belong to and the reward that you will receive when... when this life is, is over for us. Robert. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord. Lord, thank you for the message we hear that we receive through brother from you, Lord. Lord, thank you for opening our hearts and our minds and our souls and blessing us. And blessing us that we all be here together, Lord, and learn together and share the word with you, Lord. Lord, please look over our first responders, Ukraine. And the rest of the world that needs your help and hand, Lord. Lord, we all need your help. We all need you, and we all need you in our life. Lord, the ones that need the helping hands, the healing helping hands, reach out and put the hedge of protection. Show them, teach them, get them back to you. Lord, look over our youth as, as and David and, and Ellie and Tori as they travel. Lord, look, look over our kids and bring them back home safe to us, Lord. Lord, please bless this church. We ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week. Cake. 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 Lots of cake.